Satya and Scott Guthrie, Microsoft's EVP of Cloud and AI, give us a tour of their brand new Fairwater 2 data center, the current most powerful in the world. We've tried to 10x the training capacity every 18 to 24 months. And so this would be effectively a 10x increase, 10x from what GPD-5 was trained with. And so to put it in perspective, the number of optics, the network optics in this building is almost as much as all of Azure across all our data centers two and a half years ago. It's kind of what, five million network connections. You've got all this bandwidth between different sites in a region and between the two regions. So is this like a big bet on scaling in the future that you anticipate in the future, there's gonna be some huge model that needs to require two whole different regions to train? The goal is to be able to kind of aggregate these flops for a large training job and then put these things together across sites. Right. And the reality is you'll use it for uh, training and then you'll use it for data gen, you'll use it for inference in all sort of ways. It's not yeah. like it's going to be used only for one workload forever. Fairwater 4, which you're going to see under construction nearby, mm -hmm. yeah, will also be on that one peta petabits network yep. so that we can actually link the two at a very high rate. And then basically we do the AI WAN connecting to Milwaukee where we have multiple other Fairwaters being built. Literally, you can see the the model parallelism and the data parallelism. It's kind of built for um, essentially the training jobs, the pods, the super pods across this campus. And then with the van, you can go to the Wisconsin data center and literally run a training job with all of them getting aggregated. And what we're seeing right here is this is a cell with no servers in it yet, no racks. How many uh, racks are in a cell? We think about it. I, we don't necessarily share that per se, but but we, we let me. It's the reason I ask. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> uh, you'll see upstairs. I'll start and so counting. I'll you start can start counting. counting. We'll let you start counting. How many counting. cells are there in this building? That part also I can't <laughs> tell you. Yeah, but, well, division but, is easy, right? <laughs> oh my God, it's got all loud. Are you looking at this like, now I see where my money is going? <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of like, I run a software company. Welcome to the software company. <laughs> How big is the design space once we've decided to use the GB200s and NVLink? How many other decisions are there to be made? It is coupling from the model architecture to what is the physical plan yeah. that's optimized. And it's also scary in that sense, which is, hey, there's going to be a new chip that'll come out, yeah, yeah. which obviously, I mean, you take Vera Rubin Ultra, I mean, that's going to have power density that's going to be so different, but with cooling requirements that are going to be so different, right? right? So you kind of don't want to just mm -hmm. build all to one spec. So that goes back a little bit to, I think, the dialogue we'll have, which is you want to be scaling yeah. in time yeah. as opposed to scale once yeah. and then be stuck with it. Yeah. If you enjoyed this clip, you can watch the full episode here and subscribe for more clips. Thanks.